Japan Times, Nvidia shares soared by around 6% on Tuesday, achieving a record high and positioning the AI chipmaker's market value just $100 billion shy of surpassing Apple. Nvidia's stock reached an intraday peak of $1,149.39, pushing its market capitalization to $2.8 trillion. In contrast, Apple, which is currently Wall Street's second most valuable company after Microsoft, saw a slight dip of 0.2% in its stock value, maintaining a market cap of $2.9 trillion. This surge in Nvidia's stock underscores the growing influence of AI technology in the financial markets. The Globe and Mail, Nvidia's remarkable stock performance has been driven by several key factors, including a forecast of second-quarter revenue that exceeded Wall Street expectations and an announcement of a stock split. The company's shares have surged nearly 13% recently due to these developments. Nvidia's data center segment reported a five-fold increase in revenue, highlighting the high demand for its high-performance AI chips from tech giants like Alphabet, Microsoft, and Amazon. Investment analyst Dan Coatsworth noted that Nvidia's business prospects remain strong, with the AI theme continuing to attract investor interest. Yahoo US, Nvidia's stock surpassed the $1,100 mark for the first time ever, buoyed by Elon Musk's AI startup XAI, which raised $6 billion in a Series B funding round. This investment further fueled optimism about Nvidia's growth, particularly after the company reported a 461% year-over-year surge in adjusted earnings and a 262% increase in revenue for the first quarter. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang emphasized the strong and accelerating demand for generative AI training, with the company's data center revenue reaching a record $22.6 billion, accounting for 86% of total revenue for the quarter. Diplomat The recent Japan-US summit focused on multiple areas of cooperation, including defense, space development, and notably, semiconductors. Historically, Japan led the semiconductor market, but now it holds only 10% of the global share, with Taiwan and South Korea dominating the advanced sector. The US experienced a semiconductor shortage during the COVID-19 pandemic, highlighting vulnerabilities in the supply chain. The summit emphasized the importance of current generation and mature node, legacy, semiconductors, which are critical for everyday products like automobiles and home appliances. The US aims to counter China's state subsidized overcapacity of legacy semiconductors that threaten global market stability by driving prices down and eliminating competition. Japan and the US have begun discussions on legacy semiconductor initiatives, although their perspectives differ. The US sees a Chinese monopoly as a supply chain risk while Japan views it as an opportunity for its semiconductor manufacturing equipment and materials industries. Despite these differences, both nations agree on advancing semiconductor technology, focusing on next-generation semiconductors and advanced packaging to maintain technological leadership. Yahoo US Telegraph Australian Broadcasting Corporation, the Australian share market is poised for a decline in morning trade, influenced by a mixed performance on Wall Street. Notably, the Nasdaq surged past 17,000 points for the first time, driven by a significant rise in AI stocks such as NVIDIA. Investors are eagerly awaiting the inflation data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, ABS, which could offer clues on the Reserve Bank's potential timeline for interest rate cuts. The day's trading activities will be closely monitored to see how these factors unfold. The Globe and Mail The Conservative Party has extended an olive branch to the minority Liberal government, proposing to expedite the passage of a foreign interference bill before the next federal election. Conservative MP Michael Chung has communicated this offer in writing, and Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc expressed openness to collaborating with the opposition. The bill, introduced in May, aims to create a mandatory registry for individuals engaged in political or governmental influence activities on behalf of foreign entities and to enhance the authority of Canada's spy agency to counter threats. Meanwhile, Gaza officials reported that Israeli tanks shelled an evacuation zone near Rafah, killing at least 21 people including women, although Israel denied the attack.
In other news, Ontario and the federal government have resolved a housing dispute with a $357 million agreement to fund new rent-assisted social housing units. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6Do Brief via email.